hello friends hope you are all safe this video is about basics of direct stiffness method of analysis in general there are two methods of analysis that is force method and displacement method minimum strain energy method theorem of least work consistent deformation are examples for force method of analysis whereas slope deflection method moment distribution method kanis method are examples of displacement method of analysis here direct stiffness method which is discussed in this video comes under the category of displacement method okay now before the use of computers in the field of analysis the methods that were mostly adopted were slope deflection and moment distribution which also comes under displacement method but since in computers huge calculations can be done with greater speed and accuracy direct stiffness method become more common and this method is also used in the latest method of analysis that is finite element analysis now talking about this method it uses stiffness to calculate unknown displacements stiffness means stiffness is the property of a member how stiff a member is it is expressed by the parameter called stiffness so this is a displacement method so the unknowns will be displacements these unknowns we will find these unknowns unknown displacement and with this calculated displacement and stiffness we will be able to find the member forces okay by doing problems we will become more familiar about this now the relation or formula connecting force stiffness and displacement is f is equal to k into d where f is the force k is the stiffness and d is the displacement usually these are expressed in matrix form so f is actually force matrix k is the stiffness matrix and d is the displacement matrix this formula f is equal to k into t is used in the entire direct stiffness method of analysis and so we have to by heart it that is f is equal to k d this this is a simple formula and you have to by heart it for doing this analysis next before going into numerical problems we have to know certain basic things and terms related to this analysis first thing is about local and global coordinate system consider the example shown here it is a structure it is a frame structure having four joints also called nodes joints are also called nodes in no d e s nodes and three members that is member 1 2 member 2 3 and member 3 4 so this structure has four joints or four nodes and three members okay now in global system the position of x y coordinates x y coordinates are also called cartesian coordinates this position that is position of x y coordinates are fixed fixed and do not depends on the position or inclination of the individual members they will always be directing to directions will be same that is x y z they will be mutually perpendicular axes and they are always fixed irrespective of the inclination of the member you can see for members 1 2 2 3 and 3 4 the position of x y is fixed look at this it is fixed now for considering now sorry now consider member 1 2 it is inclined at an angle theta from x axis force in x direction is f cos theta and in y direction it is f sin theta okay 
Now for member 2, 3 in x direction forces f itself because the member is parallel to x axis and in y direction there is no force therefore force in y direction fy is 0. Now for member 3, 4 fx is f cos 180 minus theta and fy is f sin 180 minus theta. Here I took theta on the right side because in direct stiffness method ankle is always taken from x axis in anti clockwise direction that is from x axis in anti clockwise direction ok that you have to note angles are always taken in the anti clockwise direction from x axis here I haven't mentioned about sign of forces whether it is compression tension we take positive negative sign uh, I haven't mentioned it usually according to the direction of forces you can choose whether it is positive or negative ok next is about local coordinate system you can see it is not fixed and changes with the position or inclination of members in local coordinate system x axis is placed along the longitudinal axis of the member along along the longitudinal axis of the member so here for member 1 2 the axis x is inclined along with the member and y as usual perpendicular to x axis now to get the positive and negative x direction or positive and negative x axis what we will do is here the member is 1 2 that is we assume that the member is proceeding from 1 towards 2 and hence we consider direction 1 to 2 as positive x axis and 2 to 1 as negative x axis ok 1 to 2 as positive x axis but this is not a hard and fast rule you can choose your own direction but have to follow it throughout the analysis so for convenience to remember I have took I have taken like this ok now about the forces in x and y direction force in x direction fx is f itself and in y direction it is 0 why because the member is parallel to x axis because local x axis will be parallel to the member hence fx is f itself and fy is 0 for member 2 3 2 to 3 is taken as positive x direction and fx is f itself and fy is 0 and for member 3 4 3 to 4 is taken as positive x axis direction and forces fx is f and y in y direction fy is 0 ok next we have to know the equations connecting the local and global coordinates as stated earlier force is equal to stiffness into displacement here let us take the force as p or let us take name it as p so as you can see p is equal to kg into d in which all terms are in global coordinates that is p is the force in global coordinates or force matrix in global coordinates kg k sub k suffix g is global stiffness matrix that is stiffness of the members in the direction of global coordinates and capital D is displacement of members in global coordinates which is also in a matrix form similarly for local coordinate system small p is equal to kl into small d where p is forces in the direction of local coordinates kl is the stiffness of the member in the direction of local coordinates and d small d is the displacement of members in the direction of local coordinates or we can say that or we can simply say that p is the local forces kl is the local stiffness matrix and d is the local displacement matrix now look at this figure in this you can see small p1 is the force in local coordinates and capital P1 and P2 are the global force coordinates similarly in the second figure 
D1 is the local displacement and capital D1 and D2 are its global displacements. Okay. From these figures, we can see that by rotating the global coordinates through an angle, say theta, we can obtain the local coordinates. And vice versa is also true. That is, by rotating P1 anti-clockwise and P2 clockwise, we obtain our local force small p1. Similarly, for this figure also, that is by rotating d1 and d2, we obtain the local displacement small d1. Thus, we can write the relation as small d, that is local displacement, small d is equal to t into capital D, where t is the rotational transformation matrix. Where t is the rotation transformation matrix which we can derive later that is local displacement can be obtained by multiplying global displacement with rotation transformation matrix okay this is the first relation now the second relation is kg is equal to t transpose kl into t that is to obtain global stiffness matrix from local stiffness matrix we have to multiply the local stiffness matrix by t transpose and t where t is tra rotational transformation matrix or we can simply say it as transformation matrix okay now the third relation is which is similar to the first relation local force p is equal to t into global force capital p that is p is equal to t into p what is it says it says that the local forces local member forces can be obtained by multiplying global member forces with transformation matrix okay next we have local force p is equal to local stiffness matrix k into local displacement but here local displacement d can be written as t into global displacement as we have seen in the first relation that is small d is equal to t into capital d by substituting we get local force p is equal to local stiffness matrix kl into t into global displacement matrix okay this is an important relation that is to get local member forces what we have to do it is local member forces is equal to local stiffness matrix into transformation matrix into global displacement matrix this relation is frequently used in the analysis okay finally one more basic relation is kg is equal to kg1 plus kg2 plus kg3 plus etc etc over capital kg is the structure stiffness matrix which is the global stiffness matrix for the whole structure a structure means it will be having a lot of members number of members and for the whole structure there will be a stiffness matrix and that is called kg and kg1 kg2 kg3 etc are the element stiffness matrix that is global stiffness matrix of individual members forming the structure that is what it says it says that to get the global stiffness matrix of a structure we what we have to do we have to sum the global stiffness matrix of the individual members forming that structure okay so these are the basic terms you have to know before doing direct stiffness method of analysis hope you have understood all these basics thank you for watching